I was about 20 years old and I had a uh, had a bit of a dry spell and for about a year I had this dry spell and I was talking to guys at work I was a roofer at the time and they were telling me well, why don't you uh, go to a rub and tug or um, you know call the call the yellow pages the personals right go on the, go on the newspaper like get a hooker <laughs> and uh, I was like well I was a timid kid I was 20 years old and you know that wasn't my thing so I thought about it for about two weeks and I was like you know like it's not my thing but you know I you know I, I gotta have some sort of experience you know I, so um, I, ca I called the uh, yellow pages and the lady was um, she's like yeah yeah don't worry about it We'll uh, we'll get you somebody you re you'll like, right? So I'm waiting and I'm waiting, right? At, at this point, at this point, I was thinking, you know, she'd be here within an hour, right? And this is when I lived with my sister, and uh, my cousin at the time was staying with us for about a month, and I had to give them each twenty dollars to get the fuck out of the house, so that I, you know, we could be have some privacy right so i gave them, i told them the whole situation right they had a laugh and i gave them 20 bucks and they left so i'm waiting for about an hour maybe a little longer right and she doesn't show and then my sister and my cousin come back and they're like did it happen so i had to explain to them no 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 it didn't happen yet so i called the place up again and they're like okay well she'll be coming in about 45 minutes we usually wait for a second call to make sure you guys are serious, right? And then she's asking me, uh, do you, is there coke involved, you know, or any kind of drugs involved? And I was like, no. And she's like, well, it doesn't sound like it. I hear other people in the background. It's like, well, that was my sister and my cousin. <laughs> so bad. Right? So, um, my sister who, so who knows what involved. she was thinking, right? Oh, like, is this like, a, like an incest party? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Am I gonna be fucking a whole family? <laughs> so uh, she's like, "Yeah, forty-five minutes. She'll show up." And so I had to give my sister and my cousin another twenty dollars each to to leave the house. So as they're leaving, she finally shows up. This chick finally shows up, and I can hear laughter in the hallway. Yeah. Right. So I I get a knock on the door. And I open it, right? And this lady, she's, you know, she's got a pretty face, but she was chunky. She had yeah. big tits, but a chunky body, right? She yeah. had at least two rolls, right? <laughs> um, so I open the door, and she's um, she's like, do you know those people? I was like, I look over. It's like, no. She's like, well, I thought maybe you would have known them because they're coming from your direction, and they're laughing, so I figured they knew what was going on. I was like, I don't know them. Right? So she, I invite her in. She's like, well, where do you want to do this? I said, my bedroom. And she obviously noticed that I was a little nervous. Yeah. And uh, she's like, so what we do at first is, um, well, we'll set you down, right? Take your clothes off, right? And I'll give you like a five-minute massage, right? And I'll tell you our rates. Right. Yeah, so my understanding was from my from my bosses who have done this plenty of times before. They're like, it's two hundred fifty dollars an hour flat rate, right? So that's what I explained to her, and, and she told me that yes, it's two hundred fifty dollars for me to show up. Yeah. So she's explaining. I'm not. I don't remember the exact rates, but. Going off a of ballpark here, it was, I think it was $180 for sex. It was a little over $200 for anal. It was $130 for a blow job. And I think she said it was like $500 for like double penetration. So I explained to her that I only had 300 bucks, right? And... <clears throat> she told me that uh you know we can make this work for now so she uh 
I take off my shorts, right? And she puts a condom on me, right? A slavered one at that, I suppose. Um, and she's like, sucking me off. And, you know, she sucks me off until I blow my load. And after that, I was like, well, I kind of want to have sex, right? Like, I know I blew my load. I should be done. But, yeah. you know, I want more, right? And she's like, well, what we can do is uh, she had a pimp outside, right, in a van. <laughs> and she's telling me that she... she a pimp in a van. Yeah, I suppose, right? <laughs> Um, I don't know what you'd call them even nowadays. Are pimps. they still pimps? Oh, yeah, they're, yeah, still, they're pimps. still pimps. They'll be a pimp in the van. Okay. So they're always going to be pimps. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's, she, she said that if you give my pimp or my guy in the van $20, he'll take you to the bank. You could take out more money and come back here and finish off. Yeah. Right? So I was like, okay. Right? Not thinking. So I get my clothes on. I follow her out to the van. Get in the van, and I get in the front seat, and he's like, okay, so what do you want to do? And I was like, let's go to the bank. It's the Royal Bank down the street. Sorry, R R RBC. <laughs> um, so we go down to the bank, right? I take out about 500 bucks, and this $500 is not from my, my savings or my checkings account. It's from my credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... I take it out. I give the guy twenty dollars. We go back. And, oh yeah, okay. Pimp twenty dollars for driving. It? Yeah. Well, it's, that's she. She said that that was that's what they do, right? If you need to go to the bank and get more money out, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, but I forgot to mention this is that before we left for the bank, he asked me how I was treating his woman, right? And he's like, "You better be treating her good because I have a gun under my seat." And I was. Uh, the only thing that guy had was a nerf. <laughs> Probably, but you know, I was a timid twenty-year-old kid. I didn't yeah. know what the fuck I was doing, right? Uh -huh. um, so, so we we get back, and we get back into my house uh -huh. in uh, the apartment we lived in, and I take off all my clothes, and I remember earlier that evening she was telling me that it's it's customary. Or it's a rule to keep the money on the dresser. Right? And of course, you know, I've heard about that before, right? I've seen it in movies where they just put the money on the dresser. And, you know, they take it and go when it, they're done, right? So that's what I did. I put the whole $800 on the dresser. And I was, you know, I was taking my clothes off. I ended up lying there on my bed. And then she's like, oh my god, I forgot. I forgot the condoms. Just wait here. I'll go get them, right? And she's like, what, what flavor of condom do you want? And I'm thinking in my head, why do I care what flavor of condom? I, you know, I'm not sucking my own dick here. You're not watching this, right? So she leaves, and I'm, um, I'm waiting five minutes, right? I'm waiting for the buzzer to go, right? And um, ten minutes go by. 15 minutes go by. I should have realized what was happening after about seven or eight minutes, right? So I get my clothes on, put my shoes on, I go outside, the van's gone. And, um, you know, right away, I, I don't even look at my desk right away, right? I don't even realize that maybe she took the money. Or, so I'm like, this is kind of stupid. Or maybe she, maybe there was an emergency, I was thinking, right? Maybe something happened. So I'm waiting, waiting hoping, ho hoping for a phone call, nothing. And I know I'm sitting there in my bed, right? And I notice that's when I noticed the money was gone, right? I'm looking that maybe it dropped on the floor, it didn't drop on the floor. I thought maybe I put it in my, uh, in my dresser, my top drawer. No, it's not there. And I was, it kind of dawned on me like, fuck. Yeah. You know, I paid eight hundred dollars for a fucking blowjob. Yeah. Yeah, I did, right? So I I felt pissed off, so I, I called the place up. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I called them up. I want a refund. <laughs> and I was like, hey, um, you know, your your lady, um, she left and took my money. And, she's, and the lady on the line's like, were you satisfied? I was like, well, in the beginning, but we had planned to have sex. I gave her $800. She's like, 
were you satisfied? Kept repeating herself. Were you satisfied? And I was like, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. It was like, well, then there's nothing we can do. Hang out. <laughs> yeah. So my sister and my cousin get back, and I'm telling them this whole story, and I'm fucking right past because I'm broke at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm at a point where, like, I think I was just barely, barely had enough money to pay the rent, pay my half of the rent. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I was roofing at the time. So, you know, I didn't make a lot of money, especially in the... Like, I think this was around the summertime, but even then, me being 20 years old, I think I was only making like fourteen fifty an hour, not even. So I didn't make a lot of money. Because a lot of times, too, if it's raining, snowing, if it's windy, we didn't work. So, but that's the case of the $800 blowjob. And I've learned my lesson. I think for... Because I was roofing, it probably took me about, if I remember correctly, about six months to pay that off. $800. So do you have a story that can beat that? No, no. No, not really? I've never played $800 for anything <laughs> in my life. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, you, were, you gambled. No? No, I, you, you know, there was a day... I've never paid $800 for gambling, though. No? What's the most you've ever paid for gambling? Maybe fucking a hundred uh, bucks. hundred bucks? Yeah. Because I remember when we were hanging around with, uh, I'm not going to name names here, but the person that we know, uh, my best friend from from high school, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. We, like, we went to the casino sometimes together, right? I think it was, it was you, me, and her at least a few times, and I remember you paying... Uh, Probably putting down a couple hundred dollars. Oh, that was for cocaine, gambling, booze. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was for all kinds of shit. But that was still only like two, three hundred dollars. Yeah. Mm. But I wasn't prone to sex in that or anything. I was just going to play poker and get high. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> and I ended up getting sick for fucking two weeks after that. Oh, yeah. And your face getting all bloated up. Yeah, every time I did Was that, that around that time? Because I think that was well, right around the time. Yeah, we were still all working at uh, that B place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> British Columbia. Yeah. yeah, where we made things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we lived together then too, right? For about a year until I fucked that up. So you don't have any other stories? I do. Yeah. Well, let's, hear, let's hear one, a small one. Oh what you God, got? I got a really dirty one. Well, it's not even dirty. It's just bad. Mm -hmm. So when I was like five or six, I lived on an island somewhere in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. Prince Edward Island. <laughs> and um, someone that was very close to me who took care of me was in the military. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we lived on the island. There was a military base out there at the time. There's not anymore. Yeah. So... Was this, was this the same military military base that you mentioned in the last video? No, no, this is a different one. I was in Greenwood. So, um, I happened to be a lucky little six-year-old, and my parents bought me a television, and they put it in the room, and they gave me cable. Uh-huh. So I didn't bother them with my mm -hmm. bullshit cartoon shows while they were watching whatever the hell they were watching. Yeah. So I used to stay up late at night, and I used to watch friggin' uh, my channels. Most of the time, it was fucking like YTV or CTV mm -hmm. or whatever was coming in. So after, you know, a few months of this, fucking, I started picking up this really bad habit and fucking running around telling everybody how much I wanted to have sex and how much I wanted <laughs> blowjobs and how much I like titties and all this. And I'm like uh. fucking five, six years old. <laughs> and after like a few days of this, my parents are like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what's going on? Like, you should not know any of this. So my dad uh. sits me down and talks to me. He's like, where are you picking up all this the uh, sex talk at like where's this coming from I'm like well I'm watching it on television he's like what are you talking about you're watching it on television I'm talking about titties and fucking and the whole nine I'm a kid he's like this sounds like some you know some serious some hardcore stuff he's like you know yeah. what television shows are you watching that you're picking this up on I was like well you know I, I've seen some of it on Star Trek and he's like Star Trek really like, well, you know, they talk about it yeah. they have the skin tight outfits he's like yeah I don't think it's coming from Star Trek he's like where are you watching this I'm like well I'm watching it on YTV He's like, you're watching all this on YTV. He's like, you're out of your mind. There's something going on. Yeah. So he actually went to a fucking psychologist. He went to talk to the psychologist. He's like, there's something going on with my kid. Is yeah. you know, somebody doing something to him? Is he actually finding this shit on his own? Like, what's going on? He's only five or six. 
to psychologist, and so he told this psychologist, and the psychologist was like, well, what's he telling? He's like, he's watching it on TV. He's like, well, how's he watching this on TV? He's like, well, he's got a TV in his bedroom, but he said he's watching it on fucking white TV. He's like, there's no fucking white. This is happening on fucking white TV. Why TV is this kid station. So my dad decides he's going to get the bright idea, and he stays out one night, a couple of nights, and he puts on white TV, and he stays yeah. out till like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And sure enough... <laughs> The fucking YTV would feed would go out and hardcore porn would fucking come on. And it would come on like a little mm-hmm. and it'd be on for like 15, 20 minutes and it'd be gone and the regular yeah. program would start again. And then it would come fucking back on. I'm not even fucking kidding. His dad's like, holy shit, he is watching this on fucking YTV. <laughs> Nobody's fucking around with yeah. him. He's not mental. Like, he's yeah. actually watching this. So he went down to the fucking uh, the station, the TV station mm-hmm. on the island. Turns out the guy that used to do the graveyard shift, he would get porn to come in while he was on shift so he could watch porn fucking late at night and it was fucking around with the fucking radio waves uh. and YTV, this chase is the station I was watching at like one o'clock in the morning would get hardcore fucking porn on it. <laughs> Jesus. So I'm five or six years old and I'm watching hardcore porn on YTV. <laughs> was that like like a pay per view porn? Or was it like, you know, that soft core no, shit? No, I'm pretty sure it was hardcore porn yeah. that he was getting because he was he was running this uh, radio tower right. so he's getting all the channels and the stations coming in mm. he just happened to get hardcore porn for himself when it was coming in yeah. and little did he know that he was actually sending that out through the airwaves to other stations <laughs> but it was so late at night most yeah. people probably didn't know and because I had a television in my room I would stay up and fucking watch my yeah. shows or I'd wake up or I'd fall asleep with it on and then wake up and there'd be like titties in my face on my TV <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking funny it's fucking up it's yeah. disturbing I remember, you know, I'm not that young, uh, living in Rosedale. Uh, it wasn't YTV, I think it was Teletoon. And it, like after 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, you get like, I think it was Duckman. Oh yeah, I Duckman. Duckman. And then there was, um, you know, like later on the night, they would have like these Japanese animation uh, movies that come yeah, on, right? And yeah, and, like there would be lots of these like, like, animated titties flying around or like weird sex in the forest and stuff like that or on machinery and stuff like that um yeah and it was like the living room was like right beside there was the living room and then there was a small hallway to the front door and then there was my mom's room and i always had it up pretty loud for the action sequences right and then my mom or i'd be watching this and soon, like, you'd hear, um, you know, like, the moans and groans of somebody having sex and whatever, right? Yeah. So my mom comes walking in. She's like, what the fuck are you watching? How are you getting this porn? It's like, it's on Teletoon. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> you can't really give me shit for that. No, you really can't. Right? So he was dead. So she's just like, uh, well, it's time for bed. Go to bed. But I remember for, like, the longest time, you know, my parents go out, uh, on dates or my mom was working in the evenings late at night i just turned that on and watch a little cartoon porn <laughs> we've all watched a big cartoon porn my friend uh-huh. <laughs> all of us <sighs> oh here's here's one more story i have so it was in the same house same place rosedale there's absolutely nothing to do in rosedale right like there's you know you get yourself in trouble that's the only thing to do yeah and right across the street was a convenience store this is when, you know, DVDs weren't quite so popular. This yeah. was like 1998, 99. You know, they were out, yeah. but they weren't all that popular. And so, yeah, the convenience store was owned by, it used to be owned by uh, like a, a white couple. It was then bought by uh, an, Asian, an Asian family, a bit yeah. Korean or whatever. Uh, so I'd go in there, right? My, that was my favorite place to go because they had like hundreds of movies in there. So I'd go in there and, you know, look at the movies. And there was, they always had like a selection of softcore porn. Mm. So I'd go and rent one. I was, yeah, I was just old enough. I was like, yeah, 15, 16, right? They were okay with somebody like me that young taking out some softcore porn, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> I, All right, you can see a little side. Yeah, so, yeah. so uh, I, I don't remember what the title was called, but I remember is I, with the cassette tapes, 
you could peel off the, the sticker on top, right? Mm -hmm. The label, mm -hmm. right? So I peeled that off the uh, uh, off that tape, and we had a Tom Hanks movie that no one ever watched, right? So I peeled the Tom Hanks, I switched the labels, mm -hmm. right? So I gave them uh, the Tom Hanks cassette with the porn label on it, right? <laughs> gave it back to them, and... Um, Obviously, kept the soft core porn. Obviously. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> about a month later, I get a call from uh, the video store. Yeah. And uh, my mom answers at first, and they're like, uh, Do you want to? Oh, yeah, the video store across the street wants to talk to you on the phone. So, I answer the phone, and they're like, Hey, uh, apparently, you have a uh, video of such and such title. Uh, at your home and it's it's overdue and I was like I don't have that it's like well um, the video that you replaced it with it looks like is uh, it was yeah like a Tom Hanks movie I think it was called like Mr. Jones or something and so they're like can you please come over and we can talk about this right so I run across the street and I was like no this didn't happen it's like you were the last person to to rent the video out right and they threatened me they're like if you don't give the video back within 24 hours, we're going to call the FBI on you. Right? And the FBI doesn't, like, I didn't clue in because the FBI doesn't work in Canada, yeah, right? So not. I was freaking the fuck out. <laughs> they do not. Right? And then I, I gave them back the video. Really? Yeah. <laughs> FBI's going to be like, yeah, not really what we can do about it. I mean, what's our version of FBI here? Like ISIS? No, actually, our <laughs> ISIS. That's a terrorist. I know. Uh, Cecil. Our, Cecil, no. right? That's our CIA. Mm -hmm. RCMP actually do all our... Yeah. What was that you said? RCMP actually take care of all our... Uh, all oh. stuff like that. Okay. And then CSIS is our CIA, would be our CIA. Huh. But yeah, the RCMP are cops and fucking yeah. FBI agents and anti-terrorism and all that shit. Yeah. They do a lot of stuff. All in one? All in one. <laughs> and then you got your local police to do all the police work, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to call ISIS on you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have fun with that. Yeah. You're going to jail. <laughs> yeah.